I would tell you this. I am concerned for the Suns. I'm not sure if I would say particularly in this series, but then again, that would be me neglecting the Pelicans and not showing them respect because guess what? They have stole home court away from the Suns. We'll get to that in a few seconds. But one of the main reasons for my concern with Devin Booker is the history of the hamstring issues when it comes to Devin Booker. And it's unfortunate because yesterday, Devin Booker was cooking up. The guy dropped 34 points in the first half. He even gave a baby on the sideline a, a dap. Okay, and that's how fly he was. Sometimes I think Devin Booker's too cool for people, bro. The way how he just act, you know what I'm saying? The way how he walks into the gym, he's too cool for people. Guy gave a baby a dap and went back on the court in transition. I mean, come on. Where they do that at? And honestly, he's the best player on this team. Matter of fact, more so, he should have been nominated as a finalist for the MVP, unless you really are like 90% of the population that don't even know your criteria for MVP. Personally, I thought it was the best player on the best team. That's what I thought. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's if you subtract that player and that player or that team suffers, then maybe that's the, the MVP. I don't know how people use their metrics. I don't even think they know how, it, how to use it either. But I know the best player or the best team, that's Devin Booker. This dude is a certified bucket, literally. And now you're the Pelicans. I mean, bro, you have to be feeling a little bit good today. I mean, first of all, you win that game, and I'm going to talk about the Pelican side of things in a few minutes after I let Zach get in here. But you won the game. You stole home court. You got two games in New Orleans. You take care of business at home, and they missing their best um, player. You got to smell blood in that water. Now, ultimately, I do think they will, even without Devin Booker. Even if Devin Booker don't even come back in this series, I still think they get it done. But it's not going to be easy. And the first two games has been a microcosm of my statement. Zach, I'll pass that back to you. Yeah, so one thing I want to make clear. Going into the playoffs, I thought that this would be the Suns' championship to lose. I thought throughout the regular season, they were clearly the best team. And even a lot of that had to do with the way last year ended. The fact that they were able to get to the finals, get that experience, win the first two games, and we, we all know what happened. They lost the next four. I like that championship experience of coming up short as motivation. And I did go into the playoffs thinking that it was Phoenix's title to lose. I don't think there's another team really in the NBA if Booker's out for however, like, I, I agree with you, like, if he's out for the series or whatever, like, they should still be able to beat the Pelicans, and I'll get to them in a little bit. But not going to lie, I went into the playoffs thinking that Dallas might be Phoenix's biggest threat in the West just because of the way they matched up with them. If Luke is back, obviously, just because Dallas plays great perimeter defense, they shoot the crap out of the ball and I don't think there's a player in the NBA that's better at making other people around him better than Doncic and I really hope he's able to stay on or to get back on the floor for Dallas in their series against Utah we look at the Warriors and the way they've emerged over the last couple of days we're going to get into them in a little bit like the way they've played in only two games against Denver I get it's a short sample size but they looked really good like they have a chance to come out of the West and my one takeaway is if Booker's out or if he, even if he's back and he's banged up, I think this thing is wide open. And I went into the playoffs thinking it was pretty wide open. And the only team that was worthy of being labeled somewhat of a favorite was Phoenix. And without Booker, like, that's out the window. I give the Pelicans a lot of credit. I remember in the offseason – like when they let Lonzo Ball go and it was clear that things without Zion with, with Zion were just not working out. I'm not the biggest David Griffin fan. And I really was feeling down on this organization. They start three and 19 on the season, but Willie Green has done a phenomenal job of Monty Williams disciple of just really pressing all the right buttons. They, they had a phenomenal draft bringing in a guy like Herb Jones, who's already one of the best defenders in the NBA. They bring in Trey Murphy, who I think the Pelicans play great when he's at his best, when he's uh, out there making shots and this kid Alvarado, I mean, what energy the Brooklyn native man this kid is a bucket and uh he's a guy that just provides toughness and a guy that really could play for I'm sure either of our team any day so props to the Pelicans man like 
obviously the CJ McCollum trade and Ingram, like those have a lot to do with it as well. But I do think this is going to be a legit series. Uh, it, Phoenix should be nervous, not going to lie. I think at the end, they should beat New Orleans. But I'll say this, man, like I was nervous about them with Booker if they play Dallas and Doncic is healthy. And the way the Warriors are playing now, like I think that's just my main takeaway is that going into these playoffs, I thought Phoenix, it was their championship to lose. And especially without Booker, like I don't think that's the case anymore. And them hamstring injuries, they linger, bro. They they linger. You talking about two? I mean, yeah, it's not – injuries is the biggest thing for me, like I said, in my initial take when it comes to the Suns. If they can't override those injuries, the injuries will beat them before any team beats them. That's how I see them right now. That's why my level of concern is much higher than it was prior to last night. I'm happy you brought up Zion because it's weird. The talks around him, and this is actually the same thing that happened in the bubble, is that he wants to play. You see the video of, that, of him out here throwing down a 360 dunk in practice, but him and the Pelicans management are not on the same page. And he didn't want them to hire Stan Van Gundy to begin with. And him and David Griffin have always had a rocky relationship since Griffin has got there. And the Pelicans like ownership thought that firing just one of them and they ultimately got rid of Van Gundy would be the move to just make him happy. But obviously like David Griffin doesn't think Zion's ready to play for his preserving him for his long term, but Zion wants to be out there. And I think that's the question with the Pelicans. Like as great as this run is, and I give, uh, I agree, like the trade for McCollum has been brilliant. It's, it's honestly a move that honestly could have saved David Griffin's job for the time being and Ingram is turning in to a great player. But I'm thinking on one hand, like Dan, if the Pelicans could add Zion, like are they a top four team in the West next year? I think he's a top 25 player in the NBA, in my opinion, that's really, so that would provide a major impact. Like, could they be next year's Grizzlies? But on the other hand, it's like, damn, like him and David Griffin just aren't on the same page. And it kind of feels inevitable that he is not going to be a Pelican sooner rather than later. So like, that's kind of where I'm looking at this from the Pelicans perspective. I think they have a keeper in Willie Green. He's pushing all the right buttons and he, the draft that, that, they, that they brought in has been really good. Alvarado, Jones, even Najee Marshall has made a nice little impact there. So I think, like, they have some nice aspects to be excited about. But I'm just thinking, like, if this team could just add Zion, then they – the sky is the limit. But will, will he and David Griffin just ever be on the same page? Because he could be tech playing right now, which would be even more scary for the Suns. A few things that I want to add on to that. Number one, I don't know who Zion Williamson is. I, just, I don't know who that is. I know who John Moran is. I know who R.J. Barrett is. Those are two guys that was taken with the number two and number three pick who is out there on a day-to-day -day basis, a night-to-night -night basis, and performing. Now, John Moran has his fair shares of injuries, you know, but he's been there for the most part. He's been available. He's available now. R.J. Barrett, unfortunately, my Knicks couldn't make the playing and the playoffs right now. He would have been playing right now, and he would have been doing his thing. They are available. I know those two guys. I don't know who Zion Williamson is because he hasn't been available for almost since I saw him drafted. Since I saw him drafted, it's like the last three years he's been in the witness protection program of the Los, uh, whatever it is, Pelicans, Louisiana Pelicans, okay? Honestly. So, you know, we live in that what have you done for me lately world, and sometimes I try not to fall victim to it, but right now with a guy like that who was hyped up like that, I kind of fell victim to that what have you done for me lately, and that's why I don't know who Zion Williamson is. Now, granted, it's not his fault, even though it is because he had the injury that led up to this point right now, and obviously... I, I mean, he sure wants to play wants to right now, game. dude. He's made it but, known. Like, put me on the floor, and, and David Griffin won't, and that's the, that's the issue. And that's where, from the Pelicans, I'm really scared. Like, that those two guys are not on the same page. Listen, if last night was any indicative, he seems like he's happy. Okay, the guy was, you know, smirking on the court. You know, um, he doesn't strike me as a dude with, with a lot of ego. I'm not sure how he feels. You know, I can't read him, but he doesn't strike me as a dude that has this ego where, yo, you're not putting me in the game. There's going to be this level of friction. That will more likely be from his camp, possibly, than him, per se. But I think right now, you're, you're tied 1-1. One -one. You're coming back home. If we are able to take this series, then it's not like we did anything wrong. Real quickly, as we make our way off this topic, does the Suns survive the Pelicans in the series? Honestly, might go seven because I think the Pelicans will win at least one game, if not both New Orleans coming up in games three and four. 
yeah, I mean, I can see it being a long series, especially with this Devin Booker injury. We'll see what happens when Devin Booker comes back and me and Zach agree that there is some level of concern when it comes to Devin Booker and his injury. The Can You Dig It Sports Radio Network is here. Revolutionize the game of media. Do you have dig? Do you have dig?